Hello everyone. Welcome to Mokritik Mom, ladies and gents. This room is so crowded. Nice. Welcome to Mokritik Nigeria Mom. Uh, my name is Mani. Not that kind of money, I always have to say. <laughs> this kind of money. Uh, I'm Mokritik certified trainer since 2011. And I'm a CTO of a company uh, located in Turkey. The headquarters is in Istanbul. MITS is Mokritik distributor and we do consultancy, support, installation, and so on. My expertise is mostly about the wireless, wireless, routing, QoS, uh, those kind of stuff. But nowadays we have to get in IPv6, there's no way. You know, IPv4 runs out and there's no way. We have to deploy IPv6 anyhow. So that's why uh, I've started to work on IPv6 for a while, and this presentation is about IPv6. You can find out all of my details, my records, CVs, everything through this uh, page, throughout these links. Uh, I provided this uh, PDF on Mokrotik website later on, so you can easily access. The good news is we have upcoming Mokrotik training sessions here in Lagos starting December 1st. Uh, we're going to have full sessions, all seven courses, one by one, uh, which starts with MTCNA. Uh, if you can pass the MTCNA, for sure you know, then you can continue other courses. Later on, again, I uh, bring up this schedule if you like to check out. In this presentation, we're going to talk about IPv6. What is IPv6? What it is actually? How it works? Why IPv6? And why Mokritik? These are very simple questions. Uh, this presentation is supposed to not be so technical. It's not really deep technical. Because I just want to introduce what is IPv6, how in important it is, how it works. Uh, if you like to get in deeply technical, then Welcome to join our, our classes. But be careful, uh, you need MTCNA first, then you can attend uh, IPv6, which is an engineering course. Uh, right after, we talk about assignment and distribution, uh, how we distribute uh, IPv6 addresses all over the world. And then we talk about the security, which is actually a big measure here because everybody thinks that IPv6 is not secure because it's public IP, but actually it's not true. Uh, we talk a bit about security, not that much. I just introduced you the IPsec, how it works. And then the transition mechanism. Uh, we need to transit to IPv6, but still we can work with both of them. I mean, interoperability of these two protocols. Uh, these are not compatible together. We have to use both besides. So there are some mechanisms uh, for this transition. These are my classes here in Lagos, uh, all over Nigeria mostly, and some other African countries like Cameroon, Burkina Faso, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and so on. About the IPv6, it's better to start with itself. What is IPv6? So this is the sixth uh, version of uh, IP protocol. You know, the old version was IPv4. Now the question is, where is IPv5? IPv4, IPv6. IPv5, the version 5 of this protocol, was only for experiments. Still is using for experimental use. So uh, it's not registered. It's not standardized. So we have IPv6 and IPv4, which is the old version. Maybe you hear about IPv10, that's something else. That's the aggregation of IPv4 and IPv6. Means e at the same network, if you have both, then you can call your network IPv10 capable. Designed as the alternate to IPv4, uh, simply because IPv4 runs out, uh, it doesn't give us that much uh, availability. 
Developed, uh, development started at 96, 1996, and the uh, first standard has come up 1998. And this is the RFC number, 2460 is the RFC number, if you like to check out. I know none of you have read RFC completely, because it's so big, but this is the standard of the protocol. For anything, you can refer to this reference already. So the first and the most important replacement reason and uh, the use of IPv6 is about uh, larger addressing space. For sure, IPv6 gives you a huge number of IP addresses. We will talk about address number of addresses. But uh, this is the first reason you have to transit to IPv6. There is not enough IPv4 anymore. Uh, maybe it happens for you, you asked your uh, ISP, you requested for the IP and they said no it's not possible or you have to pay something but IPv6 gives you a billions of addresses uh, and no worries about the number anymore but beside large addressing space it permits hierarchical address allocation methods that facilitate routing aggregation this hierarchical level gives you the availability for routing. Uh, it facilitates the routing process. This is another advantage of IPv6. And also it limits the expansion of the routing table. You know, what of, uh, one, of, uh, one of the big problems of IPv4 is about the routing table. If you have the full routing table, at the moment it's like 650,000 IP addresses all over the world. The internet is based on over 600,000 routes, which is the big routing table. And just to find a destination, your, route, uh, your router sh uh, has to look up all of these routes and find out the destination. So this is another goal of uh, IPv6, to limit the expansion of your routing table. Also, it gives you the avail av uh, availability for multicast addressing. This is also important. The multicast and also the anycast in IPv6 uh, is really smooth and compatible with any multicast networks. Also, it provides additional optimization for delivery of services. Like IPTV, you know, it's crucial for ISPs, for providers to use IPTV now. There is a term, we call it triple play. ISPs have to provide triple play. What is the meaning of triple play? Internet, VoIP, and TV. For IPTV, the best way is using multicasts, because you don't use or waste your bandwidth or uh, your other type of networks. Multicast designed for uh, content delivery. So with IPv6, you easily can deploy IPTV, and it will be so smooth. Actually, this part of IPv6 is designed for uh, content delivery. Security and configuration aspects have been considered in uh, uh, design of IPv6. Configuration is not that much difficult. It's easy to use. It's easy to deploy. But same as any other IT protocol, it needs troubleshooting you have to take care of. And also about the security, it's really secure because it combines with uh, IPsec. Actually, it's the must to use IP, IPsec. You still be able to run IPv6 without IPsec, but uh, we strongly recommend you to use IPsec because of the security. You know, IPv6 is already public. By default, there's no NAT in IPv6. NAT is IPv4 concept. There's no NAT here. There are some kind of NAT devices that doing some kind of NAT, but basically in IPv6, there's no NAT. All addresses are supposed to be public all over the world. And now with IoT, Internet of Things, everything can be public. Your mobile phone, your smartwatch, even your glasses, everything. Home appliances. So without IPv6, IoT was not really possible. These are all the reasons why IPv6, and now why Mocratic in IPv6? Simply because Mocratic is the best and easiest and also the cheapest platform to deploy and migrate to IPv6, deploy, support, and migration. 
When I say it's cheap, uh, this is not my first reason to use Mocritic in IPv6. The good news is all Mocritic routers, no matter which router you have, can support IPv6. Because it's a feature of router OS, not the feature of router board. So with even very small $20 router, you still can have IPv6. But still some protocols like Hotspot, still not available uh, with IPv6. I mean, Mocratic is already working on that. But still it's the cheapest and easiest way uh, at least to transit to IPv6 because the transition time is really important. Uh, if you don't like to have any downtime, the transition through Mocrotic is really smooth, is really nice, really easy without any downtime. If you have done the scenario before, if you have worked with already, uh, it's easy to use. Also, it manages assignments and distribution already because it supports some protocols for distribution. But when we talk about assignment and uh, distribution, this is the IPv6 adoption diagram. It shows that uh, after January 2017, adoption is like 22%. It means it's really fast growing. Uh, also, Google provides you the same uh, diagram. If you check like 2011, 2012, it was even below 2%. Before 2014, it was below 2%. Just in three years, it raised up like 20% more. It means in last two, three years, IPv6 deployment uh, would be so fast. Also, it's like one, two years, Mocritic has started to work with IP, uh, IP6, IPv6, I mean, to support IPv6. Maybe Mocritic, one of the big reasons to, uh, about this growth. Because in last one, two, three years, I've done a lot of projects on Mocratic. Uh, not only the transition, but also deployment to IPv6. Uh, you can have both, IPv4, IPv6 beside. Because uh, still at the moment, not all over the website, all over the internet, all the websites can support IPv6. But there, there are still many for your tests. And if you are the provider, for sure it's good to support IPv6. Maybe your customer asks for. Also, the adoption per country, as you can see, North America is already based on IPv6. There is no IPv4 in US. Done. Finished. They just distributed to some Asian and African countries long years ago. And now US is fully based on IPv6. And as you can see, some part of Europe or uh, South America already available to use IPv6 and South Africa. As you, as you can see, Africa is so wide. It means has not deployed yet. IPv6 has not deployed yet here in Africa. Also based on Hurricane Electric website, this is the remaining V4 IP addresses per RIR. You know, RIR means uh, regional internet registries. Uh, in your region, it's Afrinic. As you can see, Orin, which is responsible for US, it's already zero. No IP before. In Africa, like 12 million. In uh, Southeast Asia, like Pacific region, is like 5 million. Uh, Latnik, over 2 million, almost 3 million. And RIPE is 10 million. Uh, geographically, RIPE supports more countries. That's why it has more IP addresses. But anyway, RN is zero. It means sooner or later we have to move to IPv6. I don't know when, five years later or 10 years later, one day IPv4 will switch off and we will have only IPv6. Just to compare these two versions, IPv4 and IPv6, IPv4 is 32 bit, IPv6 is 128 bit. We talk about this 128, it's a bit confusing, but actually IPv6 is 64-bit. We will talk about how it becomes to, IP, uh, to 128, but basically IPv6 is 128-bit address. Two in power of 32 possible addresses in version 4, and two in power of 128 possible addresses in IPv6. I'll tell you what's this number. I'll tell you later how, how big it is. 
The formation of IPv4 is like four octets, each octet eight bits. But uh, in IPv6, we have eight octets, each octet also eight bits. This is the difference in uh, formation. The header length, IPv4 is 20 bytes. The header in IPv4 is 20 bytes. The header in IPv6 is 40 bytes. Yes, uh, it's bigger header, but actually it consumes less bandwidth. The header of this packet is smaller because a uh, lot of headers already removed. Header fields, as you can see in IPv4, header fields are 14 in IPv4, but only eight in IPv6. So eight fields consumes 40 bytes. The number of fields are not like IPv4. And IPsec in IPv4 is optional. Means it's not mandatory to use IPsec for IPv4, but it's the must for IPv6. It says should in here means better to use, but you have to use, if you want to deploy IPv6 publicly, you have to use IPsec. There is no any other way to secure your network. This is the only way. So IPsec for IPv4 is not mandatory, but for IPv6 is really crucial to use. And about distribution, you know, at the moment, there is one slash three subnet released for RIRs. RIR means regional internet registries. There are five RIRs in the world. Afrinic, Apnic, Lacnic, Arin, and RIPE. Exactly the same policy, but geographically different. Each RIR at the moment, uh, each of them have slash 18, and they distribute to LIRs or local internet registries, like big providers or governmental providers or big telcos in each country could be LIR, those with the public AS uh, that have public BGP peers and so on you can consider them as LIR. One level lower is ISPs, normal ISPs, internet service providers. They mostly don't have public AS, they mostly don't have BGP peers, depends, but they are kind of small ISPs. They can have a slash 40, and as you can see, the green one is just the allocation, slash 32 and slash 23, both of them are available for LIRs. And when they distribute, or uh, uh, they distribute, because it's not assignment anymore, when they distribute to their customers, they give a slash 56 or slash 64. Just please be noted, slash 64 is the smallest subnet to distribute. In IPv6, slash 64 is the smallest subnet. If you request your ISP to give you IPv6, if they have it already, if they have deployed already, they give you the minimum slash 64. Also for the end user, slash 64, slash uh, 56, and slash 48 are not aggregatable. They are not be able to aggregate. It means they are provider aggregatable. It's not independent. But as the end user, there is a still specific range slash 48 which you can be independent means doesn't matter who is your provider you still can use this subnet with any providers you can uh, advertise this subnet to any provider so that specific slash 48 is independent assignment means you are not dependent to you don't have any dependency to your uh, provider but if you get these subnets, it means you are dependent to your provider. You have to receive your service through this provider, through this specific provider. And as you can see, 1 slash 3 already released. It gives you 12506. This is the reservation, and that's the subnet for each of those RIRs. Afrinic, Apnic, Arin, Lacnic, and RIPE. So you can see the differences, uh, difference in those ranges. And also, 
one of them, one of these ranges, one of these is slash 24, still for experimental use. So 506 subnets, I mean, slash 3, 1 slash 3 gives you 506 subnets slash 12. And at the moment, we are using only six of them. One of them as experimental use, and five for provided for LIRs. Address notation in IPv6 might be a bit confusing. In uh, uh, by the first glance, when you see this address, it might be a big address. Uh, but just by have small understanding, you easily can read the information. You can understand what it is. This is the notation. It's based on 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 octets. And hexadecimal, as you, as you know, IPv4 was not hexadecimal, was only binary based on numbers. But here, it's hexadecimal. Means available numbers like 0 to 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, same as MAC address. It's hexadecimal. But just to ease the process of uh, notation, you can remove zeros here. Just if there is only one single zero, I mean, at the starting point of each octet, you can remove that zero. But if you already have continuous zeros, you can remove them all, just replace it with one zero instead as the octet. So it shows that octet is fully zero, all zeros. On the other hand, you also can make it shorter than this, because continuous uh, zeros octets can be removed and replaced with double colon. So one double colon means it's all zeros in the middle. Each octet can have four characters. So 0, 0, 0, again 0, 0, 0, again 0, 0, 0. So t three octets continuously with zeros. And you can see it replaced with three zeros first. And also, to make it more easier, it will be just two columns. So this is the notation here. Also, one more thing. If they are two different series of zeros, First, for example, that's the, the red one is first, the other red one is next. In this way, you can only remove one of them and replace with double colon. It means in one IPv6 address, you cannot use double colon twice or three times. It has to be only one time. The first one, I mean, this one replaced with the first zeros, the other one replaced with the second series of zeros. Both are correct. Both are correct. The same IP address, both notations are valid, but the first one is recommended. So it's better just to remove the first sequence of zeros. It's better, not mandatory, both are correct. But it's better to remove only the first sequence. Also more information you can find on this RFC. Another concept, uh, I told you I don't want to get really technical, but these are basic stuff in IPv6. EUI, or Extended Unique Identifier, is a way to make your address unique by using the MAC address. Because MAC address is supposed to be unique address. MAC address already is unique address. So, because MAC address is already unique address, but MAC address is 48-bit, in IPv6, you need 64 bits. So you need to just add something like 16 bit of something to make this IPv6 unique. That's what we call it EUI64, just to make this address unique. We just need to add FF colon FE. Now, we have converted the MAC address to the IPv6 address with EUI64, which is already unique because your MAC address was unique. Same as IPv4, you know, uh, IP conflict is available also in IPv6. Two devices cannot use the same IP. IP conflict will be. So here you just need to make your uh, address unique. But this is the first process. Next process, you just need to make the uh, seventh bit from the left. Seventh bit. 
You see, seventh bit from the left, the universal local. We call it universal local. It means you just need to change the seventh bit. Now, this is the converted IPv6 address from the MAC address, which is unique already. Just to summarize, that's IP prefix, IPv6 prefix. You know, when you uh, request for IPv6, they give you the prefix, first 64 address. That's why I'm telling you we can consider IPv6 as 64 at the moment. Because you're getting 64 a bit address, and then by the help of EUI, you can make your devices unique by MAC address and use them in IPv6. That's the prefix they have given you as the public IPv6 address and modified EUI64 from your MAC address and this is the combination of both. As you can see up to here is prefix, the rest modified address. So IPv6 actually consists of two parts, prefix and extended identifier. So this long address, just first 64 bits are just, uh, is just uh, the prefix, the IPv6 prefix itself. The rest is just about the device ID, identification of your device. So we can say the routing prefix is 64 bits, can be up to 64 bits. The subnet identifier means the second part also can be up to 64 bit and the interface address also can be 64 bit. Now it the single IPv6 address is the combination of this routing prefix plus subnet identifier is 64 bits and then slash 64 is the smallest prefix that can be assigned to a customer. That's why slash 64 is the smallest subnet. Usually a customer is assigned slash 48 or slash 64. Slash 48, when they assign slash 48 to you, it means you have much more addresses. About the subnetting, just one of these octets can be a subnetting address in here. For example, if they assign slash 48 to you, it means uh, they have given this prefix slash 48 now you need to generate the rest of addresses. So the subnet here would be slash 16. That octet is the slash 16, means you can work with this range through slash 16 IP addresses, means two in power of 16. And the rest are just slash 64, which is about uh, address identifier, interface identifier, your interface, your MAC address actually. But if they assign you slash 52 means just one more character left here. Now you have slash 12 to generate. You can generate slash 12 addresses. Yeah, and if they assign a slash uh, 56, you have a slash 8 to play. And if they assign a slash 60, you have only one character, which is 4 bit. This is about the subnetting. So subnetting is already included in the address. It's not like IPv4 with a subnet mask or something. Subnetting is already included in the address. There are four important address types. Uh, better to memorize these ranges because to figure out which is which, you just need to memorize addresses. For example, uh, link local address always is FE80. FE80 is always link local address. What is link local? We talk about it in training classes. That will be a bit more technical. But global unicast, 2000. Multicast, FF00. And unique local is FE00. These are special addresses. If you're familiar with IPv4, you know what are these. Also in IPv6, that's the specific address for them. 
Also, special addresses, you know, in IPv4, there is a loopback address. What's the IP address in loopback? 127.0.0.1. Actually, it's a part of a range, 127.0.0.0. Then you can generate. But 127.0.0.1 is the loopback address in IPv4. In IPv6, colon, colon, 1 slash 128 is loopback address. Documentation 2001, 6 to 2 is 2002. We talk about 6 to 2, which is a type of tunnel for as a kind of transition mechanism. We, we're going to talk about it. Uh, it's a good protocol uh, to migrate to IPv6 while you still like to have your IPv4. Unspecified addresses. Unspecified address, colon, colon, backslash 128. Teredo also is a type of Microsoft tunnel. And Anycast 2001. These are special addresses. Unique local address mean to never be used on the internet. Something like private address in IPv4, something like private address. Well, it's not private address because I told you basically in IPv6 everything is public. But unique local address can be a kind of interface address. Prefix is reserved for ULA. ULA is famous in IPv6. Everywhere ULA means unique local address. FD00 colon colon backslash 8 currently is the only valid ULA prefixes. Because one slash seven can divide to can be divided to two different slash eight. FC00 and FD00. But FC00 prefix has not been defined yet for later use because FD00 is huge range. It's so big. We may not need that range, but uh, one slash seven divided to two slash eight, and the first slash eight is already in use. ULA is not meant to be used the uh, same way as IPv4 private addresses, as described in this ISP, uh, in this RFC, but it's compatible already with NAT. I told you, in IPv6, there is no concept called NAT. But there are some intermediate devices that can do the NAT for IPv6, but it's not standard. In a standard, IPv6 doesn't have any NAT. ULA was designed for labs or other resources like internal networks and remote sites that never need to be public or never need to advertise to the internet. As I told you about the Anycast and also Multicast here, this type of network is really good for content delivery network, the IPTV I told you. Content delivery network through IPv6 uh, is really smooth now just because of Anycast addresses. Multiple nodes can have the same address. Multiple nodes can have the same address without IP conflict. This is a special use. Send to any one member of this group, usually the nearest, indistinguishable from unicast address. You still can distinguish it from unicast address. And the most uh, important used cases uh, are load balancing or CDN networks, content delivery networks like IPTV. Mocratic by default uh, supports IPv6, but it's disabled by default. The package is disabled. You need to enable the package. Once you bring up the package, uh, it's going to map the IPv6 address, the link local address for you automatically. And then through the beam box or through the web page, you can open your router with IPv6. Because once you deploy IP, once you bring it up in the router, it gives you your laptop the IPv6 address. If IPv6 would be enabled in your laptop, automatically gives the address to your laptop, and you can ping it, or you can even browse it with the browser, or open with, let's say, Winbox. So Winbox is already supporting. IPv6 connection. So for connectivity, 
even in the neighbor list, you can see the IPv6 addresses. If there would be any other IPv6 device in your network, in the neighbor list, you can see them all. IPv6 has DHCP process, but DHCP in IPv6 is a bit different with what you know in DHCP about DHCP in IPv4. It's a bit different because we have the PD version or prefix delegation that it delegates the prefix to you. Prefix is the range of that IPv6 address. And also Slack is another way Mockrity can support, all other devices can support. Slack is also another way to distribute IPv6. Currently, RouterOS supports Slack and DHCP v6 prefix delegation, or PD, but, but does not support DHCP v6 server yet. About the security, I told you IPsec is the must to use. You have to use IPv6, IPsec because IPv6 is public. Basically, the IP address is public. It means it's routable all over and everybody can access. So IPsec is really crucial to use. IPv6 node requirements states in this RFC states that all IPv6 nodes should support IPv6. And there's a small description about the should, why we need to use, when you can use, but it's the most recommended setup. You have to use IPsec. For experimental use, no, you can use it for your, I mean, home lab, but once you want to be public, IPsec is really needed in real network. And in IPsec tunnel mode, you can have two different networks somewhere else. The internet would be based on IPv4, IPv6, we don't care, but there are two different IPv6 networks. Through IPsec tunnel, also you can connect these two networks together. Same as IPv4, same as what you can do with EOIP, for example. Here, also IPsec is available with IPv4, IPsec tunnel mode. IPsec has two modes, tunnel mode, transport mode. Tunnel mode already has the tunnel embedded. Now about the transition mechanisms, uh, I told you uh, we cannot, at the moment at least, we cannot turn off IPv4 completely. We need to use IPv4. So we need some ways to just transit from IPv4 to IPv6 gradually, slowly, slowly. With these protocols, we can migrate to IPv6. Dual stack is the first one. In dual stack, fully functional IPv4 and IPv6 side by side. This is dual stack. Your local network, after the router in public side, if uh, the IP is supposed to go for IPv6 traffic, it goes through IPv6 internet or IPv4 goes through IPv4. It means in your local network, you support both side by side. IPv4 and IPv6, both of them would be available. Another one is a kind of tunnel, we call it 6 to 4 tunnel. 6 to 4 tunnel is also uh, popular. IT engineers like to use 6 to 4 because of advantages. And this is 6 to 4, means you are encapsulating IPv6 traffic inside IPv4 packet. IPv6 packet inside IPv4 packet. It means, by default, your network is IPv4, your local network is IPv4, but you have embedded IPv6 packet. You have encapsulated IPv6 inside. So it goes through IPv4 without any problem, same as before, but for those traffic which would be from IPv6, goes another way. And it relays to a server. You see, your network is just this side. This is out of your network, means there would be a router or server somewhere to provide you this facility. Hurricane website gives you the 624 tunnel for free. You can use it for labs, for experimental uses, for scenarios. Uh, they assign you a slash 64. You can bring a slash 64 address to your router, distribute locally, and you can test it. Mockrotic website already has uh, IPv6. You can test with Mockrotic website, Hurricane website. 
624 tunnel is one of the easiest and fastest way to deploy IPv6, and you don't need to change any current network. You still can keep it, same as it is. Just add IPv6. You just need to add one more tunnel. It's so easy. Also, in wiki, uh, wiki.mocratic.com, there is a very nice document about uh, deploying Hurricane Electric uh, 624 tunnel. It's so easy. Six RD or rapid deployment is a kind of derivative, a derivation of six to four. It's a kind of six to four, but a bit different. From client to ISP is IPv4 network only. You see, from provider to ISP, the network is only IPv4. This type of scenario, this is good for those scenarios which you cannot change your current network, at least at the moment. You like to use IPv6, but you cannot change anything. And rapid deployment, it's a bit easier even than 624. But 624 is more popular. Mostly people try to use 624. But 6RD or rapid deployment is already available. Teredo is another type of tunnels uh, invented by Microsoft. It's actually a Microsoft product. Teredo encapsulates IPv6 traffic into IPv4 UDP packet. Same like here, but only UDP packet, because here also we have IPv4. The network is based on IPv4, but we just encapsulate, uh, we encapsulate IPv6 inside. So Teredo is developed by Microsoft, and that's the ISP, RF, uh, RFC, RFC 4380. You can check it out, what it is, how it works. If you have big Microsoft network, maybe Teredo would be a good solution for you just to bring IPv6. DS Lite or dual stack Lite is another way, same as dual stack, but it's a lighter version, and it means from you to the NAT box, everything is based on IPv6. Locally is IPv6. You encapsulate IPv4 into IPv6. This is exactly opposite. Encapsulates IPv4 into IPv6. Also that one, that's another way. So there are multiple ways for this transition you have to migrate to IPv6 anyway. Sooner or later, you have to do better to do it earlier. Mocrotic is fully, fully compatible with IPv6. In wiki.mocrotic.com, there are tons of examples about IPv6. Uh, with the help of Hurricane Electric website, you can get 6 to 4 tunnel and you can test or play with. Any questions? About IPv6, IPv4. Yep. Possible, yeah. Yeah, it supports both uh, DHCP version 6 itself or DHCP PD, which uh, delegates the prefixes. Possible, both possible. At the moment, Mocratic supports DHCP, uh, DHCP PD, prefix delegation. Uh, I know up to version 6 point something, point 40, I guess, still cannot support uh, DHCP v6. But I asked the guys, maybe they're going to deploy him from version 7. Yeah, but PD already available. DHCP PD, prefix delegation. Yeah. Six to two, four, to, uh, six to four. It's not the opposite. It's another another deployment. DS Lite is not opposite of six to four. Also, it's not the same as six to four. But DS Lite is a kind of light version of dual stack. It doesn't need that much configuration like dual stack. It's easier to deploy, but it's not opposite of six to four.
Yes? Yes, sure, sure. This is one of the solutions. Yes, yes. Actually, this is a good solution if you have a big Microsoft network. If you have a lot of servers, Microsoft servers, Teredo works well. Yeah. It's a good transition for Microsoft networks. <sighs> okay, guys, here is my contact information. I try to always be available for my students, friends, colleagues, people, customers. Uh, but if I would be in class, maybe it takes time for me to reply. I'm always available on Skype and WhatsApp. WhatsApp is more easier. Uh, you're welcome to contact me anytime in case of any problems or questions. Thank you very much and enjoy your mom. Thank you very much. <coughs> The next presentation by Dapo Molakun.